Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4, my name's Camel and this video is going to be a walkthrough guide in which I will show you how to acquire the unique institute rifle known as Virgil's Rifle. And acquiring it isn't super special but it isn't as easy as some of the other weapons we have covered. First of all, you will need to be on the main quest, the Glowing Sea. Once on the mission, the Glowing Sea, we will of course be sent into the Glowing Sea in search of Virgil. To find him, we need to head to the Rocky Cave, which on the Pip-Boy map can be found in the very bottom southwestern corner of the map. Once we head inside, we will find Virgil, the super mutant scientist who has escaped from the Institute. The earliest you can meet Virgil is when on this quest, the Glowing Sea. If you come to the cave beforehand, he will simply not be in the cave. During our dialogue with him, he will mention that he left an experimental serum in the Institute before escaping. And if you are to get in inside the institute to recover it for him. At this point, just continue on with the main quests. And then when we are on the main quest institutionalized, we of course will head into the institute. Once in here, we need to make sure to head to the bioscience sector of the institute. It is easily marked by the color green and this unique bioscience sigil above the door. It is also the home of the late Harambe. But as soon as we enter the doors, we need to turn to the right and head to the end of the hallway. Once at the end, we will find a door that leads to the FEV lab. We of course want to go through this door. Continue heading through the various rooms and hallways, fighting off turrets and robots. Eventually, we will exit the dilapidated unlit hallway into this very creepy Roswell looking room. This is most certain the FEV lab we have been searching for. In one of the corners of this FEV lab, on top of a cabinet or cupboard, we will find the experimental serum. We of course want to pick it up. And for the first time, this miscellaneous quest will actually show up in our quest tab. Bring the serum to Virgil. Now there are a couple of ways to get Virgil's rifle and a couple of different stages in which we can get the rifle. So once we're back in the cave, the first way to acquire the weapon is to simply pickpocket it from him. It will be in his in inventory and you do not have to reverse pickpocket it. You just need the maxed out pickpocket perk so you can pickpocket equipped items. Secondly, as soon as he becomes non-essential for the main quests, you can just blow his head off. And dropped on the ground somewhere will be Virgil's rifle. If you try and kill Virgil before he becomes non-essential, he will of course just not die. And building off the second method, when you bring the serum back to Virgil, you can actually convince him to want to kill himself. He will say he he doesn't have the guts and then you of course have to kill him, but not against his will. And once you do do that, you can of course pick up Virgil's rifle from his inventory. If you do give Virgil the serum and turn him back into a human, you can still pickpocket it off him. So pretty much whatever path you take in this quest, you will be able to get it. And now that we have acquired Virgil's rifle via any of those methods, before we look at its base stats and mod it out, as always I have reduced my character's special attribute stats to 1. I also have no bobblehead Pokemon magazine effects applied to my character, what this means is we will be seeing the absolute minimum base stats of the weapon. Now in the first modification slot, I am going to be going with the overcharged capacitor. This increases the damage by 85% and changes the magazine size to 33. Next we're going to be going with the improved automatic barrel. This makes it automatic, this reduces the damage by 25%, reduces the magazine size by 9, increases the fire rate by 70%, increases minimum range by 9 times, increases maximum range by 60 times, reduces side spread by 20%, increases spread by 100%, increases VATS cost by 25%, and increases sight time by 3%. Next we're going to be going with the full stock. This makes the weapon a rifle. This reduces sight sway by 7%, reduces sight spread by 40%, reduces recoil by 20%, increases VATS cost by 20%, increases sight time by 10%, and increases bash damage by 100%. As always, you can go with whatever mods you want, and of course, whatever Whatever scope you want, but personally I'm going with the long scope. This adds 10 times zoom, increases sight sway by 20%, reduces sight spread by 20%, increases VATS cost by 50%, and increases sight time by 20%. And finally, I'm going to be going with the quantum gyro compensating lens. This reduces range by 1 times and reduces recoil by 35%. And once Virgil's rifle has been modded out the way I just did, it has a base.
base energy damage of 32, it uses the fusion cells as ammunition, it has a fire rate of 113, a range of 191, an accuracy of 109, a weight of 8.4 pounds, and a value of 432 caps. And as we can see up the top there, Virgil's Rifle, plus 50% damage against super mutants. So as we know, Virgil's Rifle is a unique variant of the Institute Gun, or Institute Laser. So its overall function is quite similar to the regular laser gun. And compared to the standard laser guns, Virgil's rifle, along with other Institute lasers, offer a superior rate of fire at the cost of per shot damage. As I'm sure you have witnessed, the beam is of course blue instead of red. But unlike the standard laser guns, the Institute laser, Virgil's rifle included, has the lowest damage per shot of all weapons that use the fusion cells. However, it does make up for this by having a high damage per second rating, or as we call it in the industry, DPS. So if you do have a fairly substantial stockpile of fusion cells, Virgil's rifle excels in combat. Unfortunately, one big downside is that Virgil's rifle takes up a huge amount of the screen in first person view, which may of course obstruct your vision when it comes to checking out what's around you. So with all that said, purely as a base weapon, Virgil's rifles, pros and cons kind of make it on a level playing field as a laser gun. Although it is quite unfortunate about the huge weapon model. But what was it like actually using this modification build on Virgil's rifle in game? Well, it was pretty good. The recoil had a fair bit of kick, but it was manageable. I personally don't often look down sights when shooting enemies right in front of me, so having the long scope on there did not impair my gameplay with it at all. In fact, it actually elevated my gameplay with it because I can now look down the scope and shoot enemies a fair ways away. Although so again, once you're shooting enemies that are at a long distance, the recoil and spread that comes out of an automatic institute rifle is pretty intense. By no means is it the worst recoil or spread that I've ever experienced on a weapon, but it isn't smooth sailing. As we know, it had a base damage of 32 energy damage per shot, and after I got all of the appropriate perks, each shot had a damage of 92. Now considering it's an automatic weapon with a pretty big magazine size, 92 damage per shot is pretty good. And as we spoke about earlier, the Institute rifle, and in this specific case Virgil's rifle, has a superior rate of fire over other laser guns, or any other gun that uses the fusion cell as ammunition. So 92 damage per shot with a fairly juicy rate of fire, it's a pretty good weapon. Not at the top of the list, but not as bad as it could be. Now let's talk about the legendary effect on this. Virgil's rifle has slapped onto it the Mutant Slayer's legendary prefix, which as we saw a couple of minutes ago, gives plus 50% damage against super mutants. Probably one of the worst legendary effects that could be on a weapon. It's not bad that it's specifically on this weapon, it's just that effect on any type of weapon really does stink. It's far too situational to be useful. Well, I mean, of course, it would be useful in a situation when you're fighting super mutants, but carrying around a rifle just to do this extra 50% damage against super mutants, it's really not worth it. Especially considering when you can get rifles that just do more damage than this, even taking into consideration the extra 50%, yeah, you can get guns that do more damage and they do that much more damage to everything, not just our green friends. So a mediocre weapon with a really crap legendary prefix. I suppose it makes sense and kind of ties in with the storyline in which you have to go through to acquire this weapon, but at the end of the day, Virgil's rifle is just a collectible weapon to me at least. I would never use it in day-to-day -day gameplay. An interesting fact about Virgil's Rifle, even if you put a pistol grip on it, it will still be called Virgil's Rifle and not Virgil's Pistol. So you can have a pistol called Rifle. And just a warning, when using this weapon you may feel like you're about to vomit. After all, it is in the name. You'll be on the verge of ill. It's also very effective against powerful insects that can't talk. It sure does do a lot of damage to those super mute ants. And and here it is, Virgil's rifle in action.
And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Camel, and this has been my walkthrough guide in which I have shown you how to acquire and also use Virgil's Rifle, the Unique Institute Rifle. I do hope that this video helped you out in some way, and if it did, I think you will be very interested in clicking on the playlist button on screen. This, of course, will take you directly to my Fallout 4 Guides playlist where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely. Or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 Guides that I upload. If you think I too belong in an institute, please feel free to follow me on Twitter. The link can also be found in the description or you can search Camelworks on Twitter. And with all that said, I would like to thank you very much for watching. It has been an absolute pleasure having you here with me and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.